Well, that's a little change of pace for you guys. Yes, I do heating and boilers and stuff like that. It's just a little burger. I was here back 10 28 of 16, and uh, to say the least, the customer asked for me back. But today he's calling. Here it is. Actually, two years and a month later, and he says the spark box isn't working, which that's one of those older styles. It's got the goofy little plug here. All right. First thing I did, since he said it wasn't sparking, so I went to my control board here, which is a little spark igniter. T1, T2, probed it, didn't have anything. Followed it back. Goes through the rollout, which is a thermal fuse, and I hate those because you're free. So, then it comes back here, time delay, delay on break. That's to give it a purge. So, check my power, because if you look at it, there's the power going to it. And then it loops through here, so I went to here before, or you can test across thermal fuse. And sure enough, we had 24 volts. So the thermal fuse trip. This has a intermittent spark ignition pilot with a mercury switch. This is some older technology here. Basically the mercury switch gets hot and then it closes and switches position. One probe on the close to the normally open probe. It's really old school, but it's pretty reliable and it worked. They're kind of expensive. As they started having problems, they started coming out with these little resistors you can put across these. These things have been out for a long time. I haven't seen them for, you don't see them anymore hardly. But yeah, today's one of those days where they requested me. So That's how I got to. Uh, in residential today. Check the fleet pipe out. It looks good. It's all double wall pipe. Nothing's rusted out. It's aluminum pipe there. Got a concrete trap there we need to blow out. Looks like our pressures are fairly up. So we're going to jump that out and see whether it runs. If it does, we need to find out why it tripped. So we just replace it and hope it don't happen again. valve just in case it don't light off. This is propane, so it light off kind of rough sometimes. Really should probably have the door on. The way all the gas stays in there and lights off a little smoother. There it goes. do is grab the nitrogen bottle, we'll blow that pilot out, blow these burners out. You see some of these burners are starting to just form. There's a lot of moisture in propane, so it uh, eats these burners up. We can put a thermocouple in there if we want. Thermistor checks see what the temperature is, but there's a mess of different things it could be. It could have been uh, maybe the draft motor stopped and didn't purge it all out after it shuts off. It's just really hard to say. We're going to let it run for a while and see if it'll show its ugly head. It could have been just a weak thermal fuse. Alright, what I ended up doing, we bypassed it. Stuck my thermometer in there. That's the nice thing about these little needle probes. It's right in there, off the exact location. And we sit there and watched it. The, uh, we're at 91 Celsius, it basically got up to 120 something, I think. And this is rated for 228. Good grief. Gotta love washing machines. So, we're nowhere near the trip point. Another possibility, if this plate wasn't tight, I could have let the heat come out the front. And could have rolled out. You can see we've gotten hot up here, but that does not seem to be the case. That cover could have been, yeah, you're 
460. So you get down to there, you're in the 400s. So I mean, it very easily could have gotten up to it. Yeah, I forget how to switch it to Celsius, but we're looking good from what I can see. I called. called the uh, supply house and at first they didn't think they had one but they do so I've got to go pick it up and we'll get it installed we're gonna clean those burners out and uh, blow out that pilot with the nitrogen and uh, should be good to go all right we got our new thermal fuse in there wrote the original fuse rating there so that somebody doesn't go and remove it and change it to something else blew out the uh, burners and the pilot just a generic little attachment on my nitrogen bottle there the reason why it looks so bad is i got my light on so you're seeing all the little buzzies in the air i'm gonna go ahead and kick her back on see how she runs on nice and smooth a lot of dust in there it's with all that orange is from blew out that fan too draft motor it sounds a lot better than it did I think that dust was throwing some of the blades out of balance just to point out a few of the things I did when I was here last time a new takeo pump on that got a new pop off of when I go working on a boiler and there's some things that need to be done, some of the main things I always replace is my bleed valves. Really check out the expansion tank really good. Pop off safety. If they have problems with bleeding it, basically the way this works here, you've got a fast, uh, fast filter here on this. There is your incoming water, so you can isolate that. I put one there. I do not put union in there unless I actually cut it out so right now it's one less thing to leak if I'm going to work on it obviously I got plenty of room in here to cut it and I put a union in then um, then what I'll do if I was to bleed this say from a complete empty state or whatever did a major repair I would fill it here valve it off here force it through the boiler valve it off down there and power bleed it basically out of it so you can flush fresh water through there if you had glycol in it which very few of them around here do you could actually do what I did on the geos and hook up two washing machine hoses and a pump run it down into a bucket and you could circulate the stuff you could do either one of those two things to get the air out of it now granted this is going to be in a series circuit to be able to make this work you could do it in parallel too just like we do the geothermals uh, it's just going to take longer and you're going to have to have some major velocity. But we're going to blow out that trap yet. Condensate trap, which is down there. The reason why I glue the pilot out, and I'll do the same thing with mobile home furnaces and stuff, is a lot of times when you take them apart, there's a good chance you're going to break the pilot, strip it out, or whatever the case. And from my millions of times I've done the PMs and stuff, I've experimented uh, with all kinds of different cleaners uh, and then compared it to cleaning it and the nitrogen blows the chunks out of it and gets it just as clean as taking it off and scrubbing it with a stainless steel brush and putting it back together uh, without all the potential damage. I do the same thing on a little water heater and stuff like that. Alright, just shut off and right there you can see that we're shutting off right around 180. We're setting at 185 for our uh, set point and right at 20 pounds of pressure. But that wraps this one up here. Uh, just thought I would show you something simple for today. I'll use this one for when uh, I ain't got nothing much coming in. Uh, maybe it'll be of use to someone out there that's starting out. But otherwise, yes, we work on some small stuff just as well as we do some of the bigger stuff. I appreciate everyone watching subscribing if you like the video like and uh, click that notification bell down there on the bottom until next time see you on the next one